Yeah, hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. I would want to talk about the Bat Shaft Buresk. This is the French Tier 8 medium tank. Okay, it's a premium of course. And yes, it came in crates, heaven forbid. Which I never actually bought. I was lucky enough to get this one. In fact, I was lucky enough three times in the recent Christmas event. So, yeah, that made me happy. Anyway, I actually tested this tank. And during the test phase, I wasn't a big fan, if I'm being honest. The BET was like the STG, insofar as you think it's a different type of tank. I mean, the STG looks like it should be a heavy, whereas the Bat Chat looks like it should be a light. This can be annoyingly confusing. The Bat Chat is actually a medium. And, if I'm being honest, it's a pretty decent one at that, which again is surprisingly confusing. As I said, when I tested this tank, I wasn't really overly comfy with it. I found the low time between the magazines far too long for the role it was meant to play, its armour far too weak, and its lack of gun depression frustrating. I mean, six degrees is just pitiful. Nevertheless, since I got it so after it was released, I realised it's actually not the tank at fault here, but me and the way I was actually playing it. This happens more than you think with the vast majority of the player base. We, the players, tend to think a certain tank is particularly bad or something, but sometimes it's actually us who are bad. We play the tank poorly, and it's not actually the tank itself that's at fault. Which is why we tend to love those immortal words, the tank is broken or it's OP. Because such terms tend to suggest that that particular tank is going to be easy to play. It's going to require little skill to achieve the best results. Which, to be honest, is not actually the case. The Bat Chat isn't broken, nor is it OP. But it is surprisingly good. Now, I honestly thought I really wouldn't enjoy this tank based on my experiences in the testing phase, that it would be a damp squid. And I really wouldn't fit my playstyle or even fit nicely in the tier it was in. Ooh, how wrong I was. The thing is, on paper, this tank doesn't look like it would be either fun or good. I mean, if you take the other medium premium auto loaders in the tier, the Progetto 46, the Defender Mark 1, and the Lorraine 40T, you could compare them and say, well, why would I get the BC? I mean, the Progetto 46 is a truly amazing tank. Everybody knows it's an amazing tank. The Defender Mark 1 is a diamond in the rough. Okay, so the Lorraine 40T is a bit... Mm, but, you know, on paper, all three of those tanks, on paper, look like they should be better than the BC. The thing is, whilst they do on paper look better, I mean, they have better DPM, better aim time, bigger magazines. I mean, the Bat Chat only has a two clip. They have better gun depression, better armor profile, and better dispersion. So, what on earth does this Bat Chat have? Well, for one, it's got speed. Okay, it's sluggish off the blocks. But once it gets going, it's a bit of a speed demon. Then throw into the mix its huge alpha damage of 320, which completely blows the other premium auto loaders in its tier, but mediums, that is, away. Well, now you can start to see why this tank can be good fun. Thing is, don't get me wrong, it's not the easiest of tanks to roll around the battlefield in. That long magazine load time can seem like an eternity rather than the 18 plus seconds that it is. And its armor, whilst able to bounce, is really easy to pen. And this is when the head scratch moment comes in. Yeah, it's a medium, but you've really got to play it like a bat chat light tank. Fire the damn thing and run away. Okay, so that's a tactic for most autoloaders, if you're being honest. Find your cover and your escape route. But with this one having only a two shot and a long load time, 
the reason for its really high speed starts to become totally apparent. It also has a really low profile, and I mean a low profile. I mean, this thing is really squat. That profile helps you out more than you think, allowing it at times of trouble to side hook a tank up close and personal, pretty much like you can do in an E25, because the other tank is going to struggle to get its gun down onto that low profile. This tank surprised me, and it surprised me in a nice way. Yes, it's a different playstyle, but you can really get a lot of fun out of this tank. And you can use it in a multitude of ways, funnily enough. It has the speed and the spotting ability of a light tank. I mean, the spotting view range is 290 meters. That's 8 meters less than the FV301. This thing packs a punch like a heavy. It really does. I mean, that 320 alpha damage is, is, is obscene, to be honest with you. And the general characteristics of the medium, which is exactly the class it's meant to be in. This is a pretty decent all-rounder. And if you can get used to the long load time, if you can get used to its profile, and if you can get used to its playability, you are really going to have a lot of fun in this thing. I personally found that it was easy to churn out 2,000 plus damage in the hands of an average player. I mean, obviously, it's going to be more in the hands of a Unicom. But in the hands of an average player, would you get used to it? You will easily find that you'll be churning out 2,000 plus damage in this thing, which is quite a decent number when you're considering it's a, it's a, it's a medium, a lightly armoured medium at that, with a long load time sitting in tier 8. It's vulnerable, of course it is. I told you it was vulnerable. And you can find yourself doing a shitload of damage, but losing. But, you know, that's blitz, guys. I mean, sometimes, like most games, you will need the team to sit back and basically support you. I'm... The only downside to this one, real downside, is the fact that it was in crates. And I'm still not a fan of crates. And whilst I've been enjoying this tank, I wouldn't for one moment attempt to try and convince you to drop your cash on crates in the vain hope of you getting your paws on this tank. Obviously, it's up to you how you spend your money. But I didn't buy the crates when this came around first, and I haven't suffered one little bit because of that choice. Okay, so I wasn't one of the first on the battlefield to roll out in this damn tank. But I got it eventually, and I didn't have to drop a shed load of cash to do so. Overall, this tank is fun. Not the easiest to play, but once you get used to it, it's a little gem. That really does punch well above its weight. And it also has the ability to annoy the heck out of the enemy, which is never a bad thing. Now, I just want to quickly tell you about this game. I mean, this game, okay, the, the T-49 was the standard stock gun. He didn't have the big derp gun. This, uh, unfortunately, this, this little tank here, the Pershing, was overly enthusiastic coming down here but all i'm going to do is farm and that's what you generally tend to do in this tank the gun is good enough and accurate enough with that bloody big damage to allow you to farm but you know you are gonna get punished and that reload as i keep telling you is particularly long but its ability to farm damage is is beautiful and that's the thing that, you know, I had to get used to with this tank. Think along the lines of the Leo 1. You know, this is a, this is a, a truly accurate gun. And it really is a, a beautiful tank to farm damage in. I'm going to bounce that one there. Anyway, that's been my take on the Batchat Buresque, the French Tier 8 Premium Medium Autoloader tank. I like it. But I wouldn't advise you to drop your money on crates. Anyway, I've been fooded. By all means, comment and everything below. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because that is what it's all about. Having fun. Being happy.